Gamaka, as I said, it um, it can transform the sweater. This re, re, ga. This is a ga, re, ga. It's quite transformed. Now I will demonstrate with another set of notes. So you can see how the transformation happens in stages. The notes that I'm going to take are different. It's a different set of notes. The only difference between this and the previous set of notes is that the re is the lower variety. Re one. And I'm using pa also. Ri ga ma pa pa ma ga ga ma pa ma ga ma ga ri ga ri ga ri sa sa ri ga ri ga ma ga ma pa pa ma ga pa ma ga ri ga ma ga ri ma ga ri sa ri ga ri ga ma ga ri ga ri sa. This is a more or less staccato rendition of. These swaras, some combinations of these swaras, but the swaras rendered in in staccato fashion. Rigama, the discrete. Now, let me apply some kind of gamaka, and you can see how it is different. Rigama, gama ga ri sa, sa ri ga ri sa. Ri ga ma pa ma ma ga pa ma ga ma ga ri ri ga ma ga ri ma ga ri ga ri ga ri sa sa ri ga ma pa ga pa ga ri sa. Now the same set of swaras. I will apply a very different kind of gamaka, and you see how different it sounds. Mm, The, what I sang last was a raga todi, which is a major raga in Carnatic music. Before that, the other kind of gentler gamakas that I applied, that would be a raga called Sindhu Bhairavi, which is actually a very popular raga used in films and other such genres, light music. And also, we have songs in Carnatic music also in Sindhu Bhairavi. So, the point of this was to show that gamakas can completely transform the sound. It's completely different. So, Gamakas are, as I said, not optional in the context of a raga. All notes do not have gamakas. The same note may have different gamakas given the context of the phrase. And the gamaka has an internal rhythm, internal tempo, which is very important. And the gamaka actually 
transforms the swara. So much so that you don't know where is the swara and where is the gamaka. It's just one integrated whole. And it almost seems um, not quite comprehensible why we are giving that movement, that swara. Sarega. The only reason why we are calling it ga is that it's between ma and re. The, the actual pitch of ga may not be heard at all in the gamaka. Now, gamaka also finds mention in many uh, Lakshana Granthas, in many of our texts in the Sanskrit uh, Lakshana Grantha tradition. We have um, a definition of gamaka in a 13th century text called Sangeeta Samayasara. The verse goes like this. Swashruti sthana sambhutayam chayam shrutyanantarashrayam swaro yat gamed gite gamakau asau nirupitah. When in music a tone moves from its own pitch towards another so that the second passes like a shadow over it, it is called gamaka. Um, though we don't find references to Gamaka as such in earlier texts, the word Gamaka doesn't ap appear in the musical context. Um, the Naradiya Siksha, which as I said, which I have mentioned earlier, it's one of the earliest texts that talks about music. The Naradiya Siksha has um, an idea similar to this, uh, to Gamaka. It says in the context of Samaveda chanting, Samaveda is um, one of the four Vedas and uh, there is a very unique and stylized way of rendering the um, Saman hymns and uh, um, it is um, it's commonplace to assert that Indian music Karnatic or Hindustani has actually evolved from Samaveda. Now, how it has actually evolved, that story has not been really told. So, it seems uncritical to simply assert that our music has come down from Saman, but certainly Samaveda chanting is quite musical. There is uh, an element of music in it, and uh, it's possible to uh, think that we may be able to trace our uh, music to back to Sam Samaveda music. But in any case, the point is Naridhi Siksha talks about um, something bordering on the concept of Gamaka in the context of Samaveda chanting. It says this, that one should proceed from one note to another, from one swara to another, as a shadow recedes when sunlight advances. So here clearly uh, the suggestion is that moving from one swara to another should not be staccato, should not be like riga, it's not riga, it should not be like that. There should be a continuity and this is essentially the idea of gamaka. Though the word Gamaka is not used there, you can see the similarity between what Narati Siksha says here and what um, Sangeeta Samayasara says 13 centuries later. Now, ornamentation or Gamaka is not unique to Indian music. It's not unique to Carnatic music or Hindustani music. We have ornamentation in other forms, other musical uh, traditions of the world. Um, in fact, if you listen to Greek music, the sound is startlingly close to Indian music, to Carnatic music, the ornamentations that they use. The basic general sound of that music is very close to um, Indian music. What can be said about Gamakas in the context of Carnatic music is one, that it is pervasive, that is 
ornamentation is not occasional gamakas are not occasional the music is uh, pervaded by gamakas you have ornamentations all through there are of course points where you have plain note singing but even there the movement from and away from uh, fr to that note and away from that note will usually be uh, it won't be discrete it won't be staccato so one thing is ornamentation gamakas are pervasive the second thing is that the the second point to be made is that gamakas transform the swara it is not that there is a swara and then you add something to it the whole swara the, the ornamentation and swara become one whole so that the swara so called is transformed and finally we have many kinds of gamakas documented they are documented um, our the lakshana granthas speak of many kinds 15 kinds of gamakas 10 kinds of gamakas and so on and uh, in contemporary practice also we have a, a clear understanding of the kind of gamakas that are used in general we may say that in carnatic music the most characteristic gamaka ornamentation is what is called a kampita gamaka which you hear very and it sets it out sets it apart quite clearly this this gamaka this kampita or this this kind of oscillation ga ma ga ma pa da ga ga ni da ma ga ri sa ri ga ri sa ni this is a uh, kampita it's called kampita but you take another raga mm ga re 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 ga ta ra ta ra 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 re ra re ta ta di ri ri ta ri ri ra 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 ta Hindustani music also is uh, pervaded with gamakas, but the most striking gamaka or the most characteristic gamaka of Hindustani music is, mm, if I were to take the same swaras, what I just sang was Raga Kalyani in Carnatic music. If I take the uh, Raga with the same swaras in Hindustani music, that is called Yaman. Ga re ga ma re ga ni re ga. No, this kind of gliding moments. Ga re no ga. not that other gamakas are not there but the most characteristic the most um, most often encountered gamaka in carnatic music is the kampita the oscillating one and the in hindustani music we <coughs> the most characteristic gamaka again is mind or jaru the gliding movements from one swara to another 
this actually uh, sets these two music musical traditions apart that you hear Carnatic music with so much of the kampita and you immediately know that yes this is Carnatic music whereas in Hindustani music because of the mind and the, the jar with the, the gliding movements it has a very different texture
ಪರಮೇಶ್ವರಿ ಗಿರಿಜ ಶ್ಯಾಮ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಸೋದರಿ ಗೌರಿ ಪರಮೇಶ್ವರಿ ಗಿರಿಜ ಶ್ಯಾಮ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಸೋದರಿ